Welcome to the Ohio Arts Council's Rife Gallery. Today, we're gonna to have a look at Interwoven, the Many Voices of Fiber, curated by Tracy Rieger, the Director of Quilt and Surface Design Symposium. Hello, my name's Tracy Rieger, and I'm the Director of the Quilt and Surface Design Symposium, uh, which is held here in Columbus, Ohio, and I've been doing that for the past 23 years. Uh, before I get started, I would really like to thank the Ohio Arts Council and Kat Sheridan and her amazing staff for um, giving me the opportunity to put together this exhibition and work with these amazing artists. First of all, I want to talk about uh, the umbrella term fiber. Things that can go under this umbrella be things such as uh, rope, thread, yarn, paper, fabric. These are commonplace materials that we use in our everyday life and I believe they kind of go unnoticed and unappreciated. Uh, that's because they're known more for their utilitarian uses as opposed to their aesthetic values. So when I was looking for artists to include in this exhibition, uh, my goal was to find artists who had taken on the challenge of utilizing these materials and kind of redirecting the conversation from what these materials are and how we normally use them and moving it towards what these materials could become. This is an artist from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Her name's Deborah Silver, and she is known as a weaver who uses the technique called split shed weaving. It's such an intricate and complicated process that you actually really have to see it to understand all that goes into the process. This piece here uh, is called, What if Einstein had been a passenger on the MS St. Louis? And uh, this refers back to World War II, when uh, people of the Jewish faith were uh, leaving Europe and traveling to the United States. And on this ship, there were 900 Jewish people. And once they reached the United States, they were refused entry and sent back. I believe that Deborah references Einstein in this piece because he was a German Jew. And what would have happened if he had been on this ship and sent back and had to deal with the repercussions of Hitler and his regime? Uh, what, had ha what would have happened if he had died? What would the world would have lost? And I believe that she uses him uh, instead of just talking of the people in general because it's, he's a person that we all know we can relate to that uh, we've studied and we know the things that the world would have lost had he died in that war. But this is more about the 900 people who perished during that war because they were sent back and all of the talents and things that they would have had to offer to the world had they been allowed to enter the United States. These are pieces by Pamela McGregor, a longtime resident of Ohio, and her medium of choice is wool, specifically felted wool. The process that she uses to turn wool fibers into felted wool, say you had a sweater that uh, was 100% wool and you accidentally put it into the dryer and the washer and it came out and it was 10 times smaller and it was thick and dense. That's because all of the individual fibers of the wool had intertangled and mingled and were no longer able to be separated by any means possible. You can also do this by using water and agitating the pieces. You can also use a technique using a barbed pin that will actually push the other fibers through, intertangling them together. The main focus of Pamela's work is the form, the form that the felt creates. She's uh, also told me that she is kind of obsessed with collecting found objects and giving them new life. We can see in some of these pieces, we see thorns, we see bones, we see glass. My, one of my particular favorites is this piece right here. Uh, when I first saw it, I thought, wow, that really reminds me of a Fabergé egg. And then I went on to read what it's called. It's called Plumber's Dream because the piece in the center is actually a toilet flange. And I think that's one of her gifts is she's totally able to transform these normal everyday objects into these works of art.
This selection of work is by Priscilla Rogan Camp, and she's from Alliance, Ohio. Her work, as we can tell, relates to the human figure, but also she gives it a functionality, a sense of functionality. And this series is a series of pieces that uh, relate to her thoughts on immigration. We can tell from the pieces that they all have a similar sense of the human figure, but they're also combined with a sense of functionality. We can see that each piece is hung on the wall by a handle, maybe something that you would see on a suitcase or a travel bag. Um, and she does this because it refers to that limbo or that time of waiting that people have to deal with when they're going through the process of immigration. Each of these pieces represents a different group of people or a different person uh, who's had to go through this horrible transition. This piece right here is called Who I Was. It talks about who the person was. They might have left a fabulous home and a wonderful life that they had to leave behind and move on to possibly where they have nothing. The weight of waiting, that one's kind of speaks for itself. It's the torture of waiting and how it just weights you down and brings you down during this process. There's another one called Impotent Arms, and that's about all the parents who have children and going through this process and not only wanting to protect them, but actually having to worry about being separated from them, having their children taken away. And the piece has many arms on it. I can see these arms just wanting to wrap around the children. Each piece from this series has a key and a number tag. The key represents the homes that they had to leave or the homes that were lost. The number represents their loss of their identity once they've gone into the system. They are no longer themselves, they're just part of the system. This work is by Columbus artist, Leah Wong, and her medium is paper. Each paper is laid flat and each piece is individually cut out by hand. When these pieces are combined and layered and installed, the shadows and the lights combined with the colors create a three-dimensional landscape. In this piece called Strip of Light, Leah attempts to capture the color of light, the feel of water in motion, and the shifting nature of air. Another amazing aspect to this piece by Leah is that as we walk past the piece, every individual's kinetic energy actually connects with the piece and makes it slightly move. And when it, this happens, the shadows fill the space. And we realize that this piece is not just the panels that are hung here from the ceiling, but it, it encompasses the entire space. This artist is Laura Alexander, and she is an Ohio artist, and her medium is paper. She's very influenced by architecture, and uh, these pieces were influenced by a recent trip that she took to Havana, Cuba. Uh, the tile work there that was all over the city truly inspired her, especially the colors, the bright, vibrant colors. Prior to this trip, much of Laura's work was monotone, white and she focused on just the shadows and the depth of the pieces but after returning from this trip she knew that she had to include some sort of color in her work and the way she does it is quite amazing and interesting so of course as we look at these pieces we see this glowing color coming back at us and the way that she achieves that is on each flat piece of paper she has painted the underside and then intricately cut by hand all of the uh, details in the piece. In each piece there are five to six layers average and she separates each piece with uh, a thin piece of acid-free foam core. So as she has layered these pieces, each with a color on the back side, what we are actually seeing is not any color but it's actually the reflection of the color on the back side of the one paper reflecting off the white front of the next piece behind it and uh, it gives us this wonderful glowing 
a sense of depth and beauty. This piece was created by Melissa Haviland, who's from Athens, Ohio. Uh, she has told me that she is somewhat obsessed with making work that includes multiple pieces. Um, as we can see in this piece, this is made up of teacups and saucers. As we look at the title, it includes curiouser and curiouser. So when we combine these two, we can kind of pick up that this was influenced by Alice in Wonderland. These pieces are made by combining screen printed Tyvek and the blue polyethylene fabric tarps that we're all very familiar with and often utilize in everyday life. The reason she became obsessed with this material is because she feels that it crosses all social boundaries and ethnicities and uh, classes. One example she gave me was during uh, the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina where as the news would pan around the destruction, you would see million dollar houses who were using these blue tarps to repair and temporarily patch their homes. And as they would pan to maybe middle class and lower class, we would also see these tarps being used there. This tarp doesn't care who you are, it does the same job for everyone. Melissa told me that on a trip to India that she took, she also found uh, this blue color. This blue color is meant to represent those of the highest caste in India. So they often paint their multi-million dollar huge homes this beautiful blue color. And as you're standing and looking at these mansions, and in the distance you can see those of the lowest caste and how their homes and neighborhoods are not painted blue, but their actual roofs and walls and floors and dividers are made from this blue polyethylene tarp. Claire is an artist from Southington, Ohio. She has been a longtime instructor at QSDS and is mainly focused on collage and assemblage. In many of her works, she uses the imagery of the dress. In this piece, she wanted to give this dress a personality. She gave it the persona of a storyteller. And all the pieces around her are the stories that she tells. She has actually shown this piece in previous exhibitions. But like in real time, people's stories change as time goes on. And so every time that Claire decides to exhibit this, all of the pieces surrounding it change because her stories have changed. These pieces are by Conneaut, Ohio artist Sandy Schellenberger. Sandy is well known for her shibori techniques that she teaches all over the country. In fact, she's going to be teaching for us next year at the Quilt and Surface Design Symposium. Uh, the technique of shibori is just as much about dyeing the fabric as it is the hand stitching that goes into each piece. In these pieces, she wanted to uh, show the technique of stitching and its effects on the depth of the fabric. Uh, a surprising fact about these pieces, as much as they look like they are pieces of fabric, that is not the technique that she used. What she did is she photographed her actual hand-sewn pieces and then printed them onto rice paper. Then these pieces were adhered to the blocks using encaustic, which is a blend of Damar resin and beeswax. Once the pieces were glued down, another layer was applied upon that. So in essence, even though these pieces do not have the actual fabric in them, they speak about the essence of the stitch and the depth of the fabric. A big thank you to the governor, the legislature, and the Ohio Arts Council's board for supporting the Ohio Arts Council, this great space, and of course, Ohio artists.